Hello everyone. Today we're going to look at a graphics card which is going to be liquid cooled. You can see a fairly complex assembly here. A lot of components. We'll be focusing on some of the main ones including this white region here which will be the bounding area for our liquid coolant flow passage. The flow passage itself doesn't exist yet but we'll make that shortly. We're just turning off some of the suppressed components here, some of the smaller components on the board. These are our heat sinks. Directly underneath that we'll have some heat generating components and then we'll have some secondary components here on the right. Um, that will include some supplemental chips that you can see that get turned on for the second analysis. Now as usual we will extract the volume using the built-in tools of discovery. This will go in, prepare the entire fluid coolant passage for us and you can see in a few seconds here we have a ready-made fluid volume. And with that done, we can then close the geometry section and we'll open up the physics one. Now here we've taken a few shortcuts already, so we've assigned some materials. These come directly from the library that Discovery has, or you can create your own. You can see we've assigned those already and the liquid has been assigned. These are our heat sources, which are coming from the components. And as a quick reminder, the upper two will be turned off for the first part of the analysis. So those are set to zero. Liquid is coming in at uh, 0.175 meters per second at 22C. And so this is the solution underway now. We've sped up the sequence just a little bit, but this takes about 30 to 45 seconds. And you can see some of the main flow features start to become established. The temperature field becomes visible and you start to get an idea for how well the system is performing. And with the first solution complete, we'll have a quick look at the results. So you can see the peak temperature is about 46.6. Uh, That's generated from the monitors menu. You can get the peak temperature. And in this case, we've actually queried every single chip on the board. We'll just show a couple here for example purposes, but the main chip one and two are shown. And then we have an auxiliary component that looks to be our biggest problem at the moment. That's about 46.4 um, degrees. Before we do any specific troubleshooting, we'll also check if enabling the top two components on the board will make our temperature field any worse. And the graphs there show us that from the previous run to the present run, we haven't made anything particularly worse. What we could do though, is we could increase the fluid flow coming from the inlet to see if we can get our temperatures down a little bit. If we assume our temperature maybe is around 45 degrees, then perhaps this small percentage increase in flow could give us what we need. So we never left the pause mode and that's continued the solution right here. So you can see that the flow is uh, developing once again from the start. We'll have initial indications on the right that we're closer to our target of around 45 and then the graphs update at the end of the run just to show us where we are presently with, with this design. So you can see here we've actually improved the design looks like we're not much higher than 45. And so what we could do now, as a reminder, this is a fully featured geometry toolkit that we have inside the package. We've made a very simple turning vein here. We're going to cut that out from the fluid volume. And you can see the result of that will be a flow passage that diverts more flow around the corner. And the goal here is to see if we can perhaps cool that hot chip down by a degree or two. We've restarted the solution again. You can see these flow features now showing a definite increase in flow around the corner in the bottom region there. And we can check our plots and we can see that the uh, component nine has actually come down in temperature. So a design change there that has worked and has been solved in seconds.